What up y'all, welcome back to the Fit Man Cook Kitchen. Today we are putting my lean spin on a southern classic. We're making some tenderloin with some slaw all over a delicious baked sweet potato. You don't wanna miss this recipe. A lot of history and a lot of flavor and a lot of fun. Check it out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to cook up some sweet potatoes. So I thought about making some sliders and some, you know, the fun stuff, but I was thinking, yo, okay, let's try to do something a little bit lighter. And plus sweet potatoes are very much so Southern. And if you've been following me long enough, you know I love sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna just take it, I'm just gonna just poke a few holes in it. Just gonna bake these in the oven for about 45 minutes. If you got anything left over and you wanna make those sliders though. Uh, <laughs> I won't be mad. We are no Jesse. We know that you will not be mad. Bro. I won't be mad at it, you know. <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to the fun part, which is the slaw. Now, here is gonna be an unpopular opinion. I'm not the biggest fan of slaw, but Done the right way, Cool Kev can enjoy some slaw. I wanted to make this as colorful as possible. Usually slaw just has green cabbage. I wanted to add another pop of color and some antioxidants by adding in some red cabbage too. So we're gonna slice this up first. And the way it was explained is that slaw is just primarily green cabbage. Coleslaw though, you can mix in and be a little bit funky with it and add in other stuff kind of like you know, uh, carrots and onions. And so it's much more of a medley. But I grew up really not liking slaw. You know why? Because of the bitterness? Yeah, and yeah. the mayo. They put all that mayo in there. I'm just like, oh, God, they don't do me like that. So I'm going to slice this. And finally, I'm going to just do it just like this. Some strips. I like adding in a pop of color because you know my rule, three color rule in the kitchen. Boom. And you know, I'm gonna actually go and add some carrots to this as well. Okay, I forgot the carrots. We'll get it to a good place right now and then we'll come back and add in the carrots once I get the carrots from the store. All right, now let's move on to the other important part and that's gonna be the sauce for our slaw. Keep is very simple. I'm gonna add in some red wine vinegar, some olive oil, add in some dry mustard. If you don't have dry mustard, you can just add in a little bit of Dijon. I'm gonna sweeten this up with a little bit of coconut sugar. This is really going to complement our pork tenderloin as well. Sea salt, freshly cracked pepper. I'm gonna add in a little bit of Tabasco. The reason why I'm not gonna add in the Louisiana is because I like that one as a finisher. because It's actually a lot thicker. This just adds some heat without adding too much sauce. All right, we're gonna whisk this up. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's actually really pleasing. It's pleasant. All right, we're gonna pour this on. I'm going to add in the carrots as soon as I get back from the store and toss this together so that way it wilts and the flavors meld. All right, got my other cutting board here. Now it's time for the protein, the pork tenderloin. Look at that beauty. So I'm gonna trim this, but before, let's make the sauce. I'm actually gonna make a little bit of a dry rub. Paprika, this is smoked paprika. Now I like to add smoked paprika just because it has a lot more body and flavor. Onion powder and garlic powder. You can swap out the onion powder and the garlic powder and just use my Fit Cook Everyday Seasoning. It's got a little bit more than onion powder and garlic powder. It's got some fresh herbs in there as well, but it's a great base blend. Add in a little bit of sweetness with some of that coconut sugar. We're gonna add in salt, a little pinch of salt, and some freshly cracked pepper. And this is going to be our rub for our pork. Now it's time to cook up this bad boy, this beautiful pork tenderloin. So before we do it, we're gonna trim some of the fat. Not only does it look weird, but also you can't get even cooking that way. This part tends to shrink up whenever you're cooking it, and all of a sudden it's gonna like tend to do this and bend up your, you know, your pork tenderloin. And then it just, not only does it look weird, but also you can't get even cooking that way. Grab the sharpest knife you have in your kitchen and just slice it off. Looks just like that, perfect. All right, y'all, we're gonna grab a Dutch oven pot. And the reason why I'm gonna cook it in a Dutch oven is it's gonna make its own natural gravy. And I think after it cooks and renders in that, I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna make up the sauce with what's left. Put that in there. I'm gonna take our rub. I'm gonna sprinkle it in. Sprinkle me, man. Sprinkle. Okay, that's it. I'm pretty sure you don't know what that one is, 
you too young for that, man. You're too young. <laughs> Came out when I was born. I'm a t okay, here you go. Yes, you're not that much, um, you know, younger. So let's just so let's just stop with the with the old people. <laughs> it's okay if it's kind of rough and sticky. It'll kind of crisp up a little bit in the oven. All right, now it's ready to go. I'm gonna pop this in the oven and roast it for about 30 to 45 minutes. I like to do a really nice slow roast on mine, so the lower the temperature, the better for me. So I'm gonna go with the 400 degrees. The origin story of African-American style cooking and life in general has been about survival. And those survival techniques have long influenced Southern and American cuisines. In the early days, pork reigned supreme in the South for centuries. Before refrigeration, most of the meat had to be preserved and slaves were entrusted with salting and smoking the finer pieces of meat for owners. In return, they got lesser cuts like feet, head, internal organs, AKA chitterlings or chitlins. <laughs> and those cuts didn't taste the best. But the slaves used traditional African cooking techniques and spices like red pepper and even vinegar to mask the poor flavor, to turn those lesser cuts into delicacies that were soon popularized outside of the South. All right, Jesse. Ooh. Time to try. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick it up with my hands though, because it was just super juicy. It's the best way to do it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like it's good. Oh, sorry. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No. You know what? This would be better on. I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. A slider would have been real <laughs> nice. With I'm it. telling you, bro. Don't skip out on the smoked paprika. Uh -huh. Makes a difference, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost as if it's been smoked a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Huge difference. This is a slaw that I actually enjoy. Watch this, first time ever. Mm -hmm. I love it. You could have this as a topping, but eat this as a salad. You could even add in just, you can just add the slaw and the pork together or a slaw and whatever other protein that you would like. This is a banging recipe, y'all. This is that good. All right, y'all. Happy Black Heritage Month. Grab all these recipes over at fitmancook.com and happy Black Heritage Month. Peace.